Oh, well, hello there. I was just out exploring the shoreline here around the big harbor. You know, I like to find things that have been washed up by the waves. What's this? Oh, well, this. This is a starfish that I rescued from down by the, the tugboat's dock. Isn't that a beauty? You never know what you're going to find along the shore here. You know, that's, well, that's part of the magic of living by the ocean. Did you know that the oceans go all around the world? Just think of all the shores there are and all the things that can be washed up along them. You know, our friend Theodore, well, he likes to explore the shore, too. At one time, he found the most incredible thing. Theodore was just on his way to the morning meeting at the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company dock. He always liked to look at things along the shore as he went. He moved closer to a tangle of logs and seaweed. Well, this wasn't here yesterday, he thought. Theodore began to move along, and that's when he heard it. What was that? He said out loud. The strange sound came again. It sounded like singing or, or whistling. It must be the wind. But then Theodore realized there was no wind. Theodore moved in for a closer look, very carefully. He wanted to keep clear of the tangled logs. No sound at all now, but there was something else. Theodore could see something, something strange. But what was it? It moved. Theodore was surprised and startled. Then he heard the sound again. It was definitely coming from the tangle, and it sounded almost like crying. Theodore made a decision. I have to help, he thought. Quickly, he attached his tow rope to one of the logs. Hang on, he called. I'll get you out. Theodore pulled on his tow rope, and slowly, the logs began to move. The tangle broke free, and out from under it swam a young whale. Oh, the whale was very happy to be free again. Where did you come from? asked Theodore. The whale didn't answer. Instead, he swam next to Theodore and rubbed against his hull and whistled happily. <laughs> You're welcome, smiled Theodore. Nice to meet you, too. And he began to laugh. followed Theodore to the morning work meeting. Oh, he must have gotten lost in the storm, said George. He must have become separated from his friends, said Emily. He's just like a puppy, said Hank, laughing. The biggest puppy I've ever seen, added Fodak. The dispatcher will know what to do, said Theodore. And the dispatcher did have a plan. Theodore, he said, take this young whale to see Rebecca the research vessel. She'll know what to do. OK, whale, said Theodore. I'll take you over to Rebecca, but please hurry along so I can get back to work. I wish I had a pet whale, said Hank. He's not a pet, Hank, said Emily. He's just here until we find his friends. And what if we don't find them? Asked George. And Emily looked serious. I don't know, she said. But he can't stay in the harbor. Whales need to be out in the wide open ocean. Rebecca, the research vessel, knew more about whales than anyone in the harbor. She was amazed to see the young whale. He must have come into the harbor after being separated from the rest of his pod, she said. His pod? Asked Theodore. 
He didn't know what the new word meant. Yes, pod is a name for a group of whales, explained Rebecca. The other whales could be anywhere by now. They, they must be looking for him, said Theodore. Yes, agreed Rebecca. I suggest we send out a tug to search around the ocean for the rest of his pod. Theodore was thrilled with the idea. Will this be my big chance to go out of the harbor? He wondered to himself, but his excitement didn't last long. I'll ask the dispatcher to send George or Emily, said Rebecca. Well, what about me? exclaimed Theodore. Theodore, you need to stay with this whale until the rest of his pod is found, said Rebecca. You want me to be a, a whale sitter? Theodore couldn't believe it. But I'm a tugboat. I have work to do. He does seem to like you, said Rebecca. Well, Theodore tried his best to stay grumpy, but he just couldn't. The young whale loved to play and swim, and Theodore soon joined in. The little whale was especially good at hide-and-seek. He would dive below the surface, then pop up behind Theodore when he wasn't looking. You got me again, laughed Theodore. You must play this game with your friends. At the mention of friends, the whale stopped his play. What's the matter, asked Theodore. And then Theodore realized what he had said. Oh, you miss the rest of your pod, don't you? Theodore suddenly thought about how he would feel if he was lost somewhere away from the harbor, not knowing if he would ever see the other tugs again. I'm sorry, he said. I wish you could tell me your name, Theodore said to the whale. Well, maybe I could give you a name to use while you're here in the harbor. The whale looked happy again. Good, said Theodore. I'll call you Walter, okay? For the moment, Walter was able to forget about being lost. Come on, said Theodore. I'll show you around the harbor. That evening, Theodore gave his place at the dock to Walter, and the little whale was so tired, he fell right to sleep. George still hasn't returned from searching around the ocean for the rest of Walter's pod, said Emily. It's a big ocean, said Fodok. It may be days before he finds any whales out there. Well, what if he can't find the rest of Walter's pod, asked Theodore. The other tugs didn't really know what would happen then. Then I guess he'll stay here forever, smiled Hank. Theodore hadn't thought of that. Maybe Walter would have to stay. I could look after him, he thought. We could be together every day. The more he thought of it, the more Theodore liked the idea of Walter the Whale staying in the harbor with him. He imagined it would be like having his very own pet. At the morning meeting the next day, Walter was the center of attention. At first, he wanted to be a tugboat, too, and he lined up with the others. But Walter was soon tired of listening to the dispatcher give out the jobs for the day and he slipped away. Theodore, said the dispatcher, your job today is to keep an eye on Walter. Great, shouted Theodore. Only Walter was more happy. He liked being with his new tugboat friend. In sheer joy, he soaked the dispatcher with spray. The other tugs were shocked. The dispatcher didn't like getting wet, but even he had to smile at Walter. And then, the tug started to laugh. Well, Walter was so happy, he started squirting everyone. Then Fodak decided to squirt back with his fire hose. Soon, all the tugs began splashing and squirting away. Walter aimed a huge squirt at Hank, but missed and soaked George. Hey! 
What's going on? The tug stopped cold. Hank rushed up to George. Did you find the other whales? Asked Hank. Everyone looked at George. Yes, said George. I found the rest of Walter's pod. Suddenly, everyone was talking at once. Everyone but Theodore. George explained that the whales were waiting just outside the harbor because they were too big to come in. Well, it's time for you to go home, Emily said to Walter. Theodore, there is something I would like you to do, said the dispatcher. Theodore! Everyone turned to Theodore, but Theodore was gone. Theodore thought he needed to talk to someone, and he chose Rebecca. I thought Walter would stay with me, said Theodore. The water around his hull seemed colder without Walter nearby. Walter can't live in the harbor, Theodore, said Rebecca. Whales grow to a tremendous size and travel all over the ocean. And they like to be with other whales, just like you like to be with other tugboats. Well, Theodore knew Rebecca was right, but that didn't make things any easier. But Walter was my friend. Theodore felt a bump. But there was Walter. The tug and the whale were very happy to see each other. Well, what are you doing here? Theodore asked. Walter wants you to lead him out, Theodore, said Emily. And the dispatcher said yes. Theodore and Walter floated out to where the harbor met the wide open ocean. Theodore was sad. He didn't know what to say. Suddenly, Theodore felt a squirt. It was Walter. Well, Theodore just had to laugh, and that made him feel better. Walter began to head off toward the ocean. Goodbye, called Theodore softly. Theodore returned alone some time later. Was it hard saying goodbye? Asked Hank. It wasn't that hard, said Theodore. Once I figured out I didn't lose a pet, I gained a friend. Well, Walter's returned here to the Big Harbor a couple of times. And he always stops and says hello to Theodore. Of course, he's much too big to sleep in Theodore's dock now. Yes, uh, the big harbor is a surprising place. You just never know what or who you're going to find around here next. Well, I think I better get our starfish back to the ocean. You know, I bet she misses her friends. Come on, little starfish. You say goodbye to my office. And I'll say goodbye to you for now. Thanks for visiting here in the big harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Come on, I'll take you home.